O3. S run and A run wall. The next day, after diving for about an hour in the basement floor of Tellurium, I carried the dropped bean sprouts back to the Cyclotown and brought them to Swallow's Benevolence, a buying shop that has been a great help to me. Swallow's Benevolence is very busy on this day. In this world, everything is dropped from dungeon monsters. In my former world, the primary industry, production of raw materials, is the dungeon, adventurers, and these buyers. Most of the towns are clustered near the dungeons, and the towns are full of adventurers and buyers. That's what makes it such a thriving place. It's an interesting sight and system, if you think about it. Thinking about this, I looked for a counter that was open for purchases. A couple had just finished buying, and the counter was open. Elsa Monsoon, a familiar face who has handled my purchases many times, greeted me with a smile. Welcome. It looks like you had another big catch today. I've had a good catch today, she said. I'll take care of it. Yes, please wait a minute. Uh, Yoda Sato. Ryota. Oh, I'm sorry. Ryota-san's name is not like everyone else's. It's very difficult for me. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry too. Urza gave a mischievous smile, sticking out her tongue, and checked the contents of the bag on the counter. She weighed the quantity and calculated the amount. Yes, let's see. That's 1,967 pyro in all. Since you always bring in such a large amount, I'll give you 2,000 pyro. Thank you. But it's still bean sprouts, so it's not much money. Considering the time spent in the dungeon, the hourly wage is a little more than 1,000 pyro. The value of a pyro is roughly the same as a yen, so to say it's good is good, to say it's bad is bad. It's heaven, though, compared to those days when the average overtime at was 100 hours a month. I think I'll go to the second basement of Telluride. What's the second basement like? The monster is a sleeping slime, and the drop is a carrot. Carrots. I imagined the scene. I imagined the scene. Defeating the slime and getting a drop of carrots as an item. Too surreal. It's too surreal, but this is the, normal, way of life in this world. How about other dungeons? Even on the first basement floor, I'm sure you can make more money than in the other dungeons. What kind of other dungeons are there? Silicon, arsenic, and many others. They all have interesting names. Really? Elsa tilted her head. Well, maybe it's normal for the people living there. But the names of the dungeons that have recently been created are difficult to say. Born? Are dungeons born? Yes, they are born from time to time. Again, Elsa nodded her head and said, isn't it obvious? Urza made a face like, of course. I see, it's born. What kind of name is it? Well, it's not Nippo, it's Niphonium. Niphonium. That's easy for you to say. Is that so? The name is something like, my idea of the greatest invention of all time, which makes me feel strangely close to the name. The drop is being investigated by the Neptune family right now, so you'll find out soon enough. The Neptune family? You don't know them? They are the most powerful organization in Cyclo, and they are an amazing group with five plant drop A's. Oh, so they bring amazing fruits and vegetables? The most important thing is that they are not going to bring it to our house. Elsa laughed. Why not? Because it's a lot of stuff, and some of it is expensive. I heard that the other day they brought hundreds of melons from the dungeon at once, each one worth 50,000 pyro. It was a big mission by the whole family. Wow! That's an amazing story, isn't it? What kind of melons are 50,000 pyro apiece? Yubari melon, musk melon, or something expensive like that. I was chatting with Elsa like that, when I suddenly noticed that my back was stumped. All the adventurers who were also bringing in purchases were looking reluctant. Oops, this is not good. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have talked over them. I'm going to go now. See you tomorrow. Excuse me.
Excuse me? I turned back and was about to leave the store when Urza stopped me. I stopped and turned around. She was fidgeting for some reason. What's wrong? Ryota san, do you like beer? Beer? Yes, I do. There's a new store on the corner there that serves a delicious beer called Lantern that comes directly from the dungeon. I was wondering if you would like to go there with me today. Beerer. I'm not sure. I don't dislike beer, in fact, I like it more than any other alcoholic beverage. I like it, but all I have right now is 2,000 pyro. I don't have enough money to go out drinking. Besides, Emily is waiting for me at home. I'm sorry, I'll pass for today. I see. See you later. Oh, wait a minute. Here. This time I was about to walk away, but I was stopped again. Elsa took something that looked like a ticket from behind the counter and handed it to me. Is this a coupon? Yes, she said. It's a coupon for a 5% discount on your next purchase. You have one of these? Yes. Elsa winked and smiled a mischievous smile. Please patronize us a lot in the future. Okay, thanks. I waved to Elsa and left the store. The front of the store was filled with as many people as inside the store. Cyclo is an agricultural city with five dungeons. The dungeon monsters drop mostly plants, so tens of thousands of people still live here in the city where people with high drops in that area gather. Tens of thousands of people still live here. There are two types of people. The pure inhabitants and the adventurers who go into the dungeons to produce vegetables. These two types of people naturally mix together in this mysterious town. Let's buy something for dinner that goes with sprouts, within 2,000 pyro. With this thought in mind, I wandered around the town and headed home. Elsa staring at the door with a wistful look on her face in the midst of the swallow's favor, and her colleague, Ina, at the counter next to her. Too bad you got dumped. Hmm, I wasn't dumped. I mean, it's not like that. I'm not hiding, I'm not hiding. It's obvious if you make a face like that. That's not the way it's. Or. I'll give you one piece of advice. If you invite someone like that to a drink, it will only be a drink, so you have to either ask them out in a different way, or use words to get through to them. So. Oh, a customer is here. Welcome. Wow, Eve, you've brought a lot of food today. Ina went to serve a petite bunny girl pulling a cart who had just come in. Elsa was left behind after being one-sidedly pointed out. No. Not at all. She mumbled sadly again. We returned home. A cheap apartment, 87 years old, in a desolate part of Cyclo. I put my hand on the door and stop. I feel the presence of someone inside. Sorry, I lied. It's an exaggeration to say that I can sense a presence, I'm not such an expert. It's a cheap apartment, and even when I'm outside, I can hear the sound of footsteps inside. There is someone inside, Emily. That's fine, that's fine. What am I supposed to do? On second thought, it's been decades since I've left while someone is in the house. What am I supposed to do, say I'm home? Huh. Huh. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
No, it's not bad. It's rather great. I'm not sure what to expect. The most important thing to remember is that the best way to get the most out of your car is to make sure that it is in the best possible condition. The most important thing to remember is that the best way to get the most out of your car is to make sure it's a good one. The first thing to do is to check the details in every corner of the room. The first thing to do is to make sure that you have a good idea of what you're looking for. It was so beautiful that even my mean mother-in-law couldn't complain about it. All I could say was, wow, wow, wow. Here you go, Mr. Yoda. Here's a towel. Towel? Emily held out a hot steaming towel. I took it and naturally wiped my hands and face. It felt so refreshing and comfortable. What's this? Thank you for your hard work all day. How about some tea? They even have tea? What a great idea, I guess that's what I mean by, perfect. Thanks to Emily, I have been feeling good ever since I got home. Emily was moving impatiently for that. Emily, why don't you get some rest, since you're so good at so many things? You must be tired. I'm fresh and happy to be able to do something in the house, and I'm not tired at all. I'm not tired at all. I'm not tired at all. Emily seemed to be really enjoying herself and was smiling the whole time, just as she had declared herself to be. I heard that a new dungeon was born. It's called Nihonium. I heard that too. It sounds like a bad dungeon. A bad dungeon? Various people went to investigate, but it seems to be a dungeon that doesn't drop anything at all. I called for support from other cities, and many people from various droppes went there, but it seems nothing dropped. Oh, so there are dungeons like that? Yes, there is. There is a dungeon called Chrome, but it doesn't drop anything as well. But the water there is delicious, and there are people who sell it, so some people say the drop is water. I see. A dungeon that doesn't drop, Nihonium, huh? I'm a little curious. The next day, I left Emily to go to the first basement floor of Tellurium as usual and headed to Nihonium. This world's dungeons drop all kinds of things. There are dungeons that drop only alcohol, such as beer, wine, and shochu, and there are dungeons that drop meat, but only marbled meat, so they are monopolized by a group of roughnecks. In this world where dungeons drop all kinds of things, I was interested in the fact that they drop nothing. We came to the dungeon and went inside. Unlike the first floor of the basement of Tellurium, this dungeon was like a natural cave, like a stalactite cave. There was no popularity inside, and there was no, now board, to check the ability. Maybe it doesn't drop anything, so they don't install such things. I guess it's because they don't have anything to check their abilities. Oh well, I'll just have to take a look. Even if it's me, if I don't get anything, even drop S, I'll just go back to Terrare and meet up with Emily. Well, what kind of monsters will appear? After wandering around the dungeon for a while, a monster appeared. It was a human-looking monster, but its clothes were tattered and it had nothing but bones. Its name was probably Skeletor, and it was that kind of monster. I attacked the skeleton. Aiming at the skeleton, I struck it with my bamboo spear. It pierced through the ragged clothes, but did not hit the bones. He pulled out the bamboo spear, dodged desperately, and stabbed the skeleton in the head this time from the side. With a full-throated blow, the bamboo spear pierced through the head. He continued to kick the head, and then he used the bamboo spear to smash the head. The skeleton staggered, crumpled to its knees, and fell to the ground. It stopped moving and disappeared. Foo! And the drop was. Whoa! Something like a seed fell where the skeleton had been. Is this a drop? I thought so, and picked up the seed, it melted the moment I touched it. It melted away just like a raccoon dipping cotton candy in water. What's going on? What's going on? As I was thinking that. Maximum HP increased by 1. I heard such a voice coming out of nowhere.